Welcome to Deltronics, a place where you come to learn about electronics. In today's video, we are going to cover instrumentation amplifiers, which are useful building blocks that you can use in all of your electronic projects. Don't forget to like, subscribe and share this video. Let's get into it. Now let's derive the equation for the instrumentation amplifier. By doing this, we learn why we use the amplifier and how the amplifier operates. We first have to split the amplifier into two stages. First, the input buffer stage, and secondly, the differential amplifier stage. This is the first part of the instrumentation amplifier, the input buffer. The input buffer will receive the small signal coming from the pressure sensor through V1 and V2. The second part of our instrumentation amplifier is the differential amplifier and is shown in the blue box. Let's label these two sections of the instrumentation amplifier. The first stage consists of two voltage followers connected together to buffer the signal coming from the sensor. The voltage followers look a bit like this. You can see that we have two similar circuits at our input buffer stage which pick up the two signals coming from our sensor. There are three basic ideal properties that we need to remember with op amps. We assume that the inputs draw no current. The open loop gain is huge. When the op amp is connected in a closed loop configuration with negative feedback, the op amp does whatever is necessary to keep both inputs at the same voltage. The voltage follower is a useful circuit because the input has high input impedance which means that the voltage coming from the sensor most of it will be picked up by the voltage follower. Any external resistances from the external circuit will not disrupt the signal which is going to be picked up at this point of the sensor. Furthermore the output of the voltage follower will try and maintain whatever the input voltage is at this point. Hence why it is called a voltage follower. It does this because the output voltage is fed back using a closed loop negative feedback to the negative terminal of the op amp. The op amp does whatever it needs to do to keep both input voltages at the same voltage. It does this by outputting the same voltage as on the input on the positive terminal. Another important property of the voltage follower is its low output impedance, which means that the voltage can be fed at high current to the load or the amplifier. Additionally, the input signal is isolated from the external circuitry which means that any changes in the load or the external circuit does not affect the input signal. Now that we understand this we can start deriving the equations for the output of the input buffer. Let's call the output for the first input buffer V out 
one and the output for the second input buffer be out two. From what we have learned so far from the voltage follower circuit, we can assume that the voltage at the negative terminal VB equals V1 and the voltage at this point, let's call it VG is also equal to V1. Similarly, in the second buffer amplifier, the voltage at its negative terminal, let's call that VC, is also equal to V2, which is the voltage at its positive terminal, and the voltage at this point, point 0.2, let's call it VH, is equal to V2. One of our first rules that we stated was that there will be no current drawn at the inputs to the op-amp. Therefore, we know that the op-amp draws no current from these two nodes at VG and VH. Therefore, all of the current will travel directly through the R gain resistor. We can write that IG is equal to VG minus VH divided by RG, which is the gain resistor. Additionally, since no current is drawn at these two nodes from the op amp, the voltage V out one travels directly through the resistors to V out two. Therefore, we can also write that the current from this point to this point is equal to V out one minus V out two divided by the total resistance, which is 2R plus RG. Let's name these two resistors RF since they are feedback resistors to our input buffer amplifiers. Since no current is being drawn at these two nodes, we can say that the current being drawn through this RG resistor is equal to the current flowing from V out 1 to V out 2. Since the currents will be the same, we can equate these two equations. Finally, remembering that VG equals V1 and VH equals V2 and rearranging our equation a bit, we get that the final equation for the output of our input buffer is equal to This is our differential amplifier. To get the overall equation for this circuit, we must use something called the superposition principle. We must look at the behavior of the op amp when one of the inputs is grounded and then do the same for the other input and then add the two signals together to find the behavior of the overall op amp. Remember that the outputs of our input buffer become the inputs for the differential amplifier. 
first start by grounding V out too. And we will find V out when V out two is connected to ground. Therefore, we will find If we ground V out 2, we know that this node will also be at 0 volts. Therefore, the voltage at this terminal, let's call it VB, will also be at 0 volts. Using our third principle, which we established earlier on, uh, we know that the op amp is going to do whatever it needs to through its feedback loop to keep both voltages at these two terminals the same voltage. Therefore, we know that this point, let's call it VA, will also equal zero volts. Therefore, VA equals zero volts. Now, let's label each of our resistors since they'll be at different resistances. This node draws no current since the op amp draws no current. Therefore, V out 1 minus VA, which is 0, divided by R1 equals the current through resistor R1. Let's call it I1. Next, we write the current through RF, which will be. VA, which is zero volts, minus V out divided by RF, which will be the current through RF, which we can call IF. I1 will equal IF because we know that the op amp draws no current. Therefore, all of the current will be in this circuit. Now we can write the first part of the equation for when V out 2 is grounded. So V out 1 over R1 will be equal to minus V out divided by RF. Therefore, our final equation will be now that we have completed the first part of the superposition principle and we have found the output when v out 2 is grounded we must now find the output when v out 1 is grounded so the second part would be to find Considering the voltage at VB, which will be the same as the voltage at this node. Since we now have a voltage at V out 2, V out 2 is no longer grounded, therefore we will have a voltage at VB. Therefore VB is equal to RG divided by R2 plus RG V out 2 since this is simply just a potential divider. V out 1 is now the grounded terminal and this whole circuit becomes another potential divider. Therefore voltage at A is equal to R1 divided by R1 plus RF multiplied by V out. We know from our third rule that the op amp does whatever it takes for it to maintain the same voltage at its input terminals. Therefore, VB will equal 
VA. And we we can equate these two equations. Finally, we will add both the outputs that we found for when we grounded V out 1 and V out 2 to find the final equation which describes the output of our differential amplifier. So our final equation would be minus If R1 and R2 are the same and RF and RG are the same, we can simplify the equation and our final equation would be To get the equation for the overall output of our instrumentation amplifier, we have to combine both the input buffer equation and the differential amplifier equation. Equation 1 describes the output of the input buffer and equation 2 describes the output of the differential amplifier. To avoid any confusion with the labelling of the resistors in the final equation, we must relabel these two feedback resistors R2, the gain resistor R1, and these two resistors of the differential amplifier would be the same resistance R4, and these two resistors would be R3. Since the output of our input buffer becomes the input to our differential amplifier, we can now substitute equation 1 into equation 2. Therefore, which simplifies to This is our final equation for our instrumentation amplifier.